Welcome back to Railroads Online. I am River, and we are down here by the oil field, and we have dropped off our mighty long train. <laughs> well, I'm definitely glad I did it without you guys, because that took quite a while. I mean, it took, I think, the better part of a half hour. And one of the problems is, and this is actually a debate, maybe just for the oil field here with these really long trains, I'm not sure that it didn't take me longer. Now, imagine what I did was I pulled up and I started unloading the tools which you guys saw and then I unloaded a couple of these beams and then for the sake of making my markers so if you look I have markers that now run they kind of have to switch because there's oil tanks so they switch over to this side I probably could put a few more might be nice but the where they overlap a bit but it doesn't matter too much but these markers come all the way out so when I pulled all the way forward the end of the train was like up here. You can kind of see. I, the last mark I have here was where the, you know, right, this is where the train was sitting, the, the locomotive was sitting right here. So that's a lot of running. Like, just you can see, like, every one of these wood. So the wood was on the end, right? So every one of these wood I had to run back and forth. I thought, well, maybe you could do the beams because you'd be less running back and forth. And I, or I mean, the steel pipes. And I think that might make some sense, but it's still just a lot of running back and forth. I'm not sure. I mean, there's going to be a balance. Like, I wouldn't go any longer than this because at some point we're not that far away. We could just do, do like two shorter trains and not run back and forth as much, if that makes sense. There's going to be, like, they talk about economies of scale, which means in some situations you're better off doing a whole bunch of something because it's cheaper or easier to do, like, a bunch like if you cook dinner for one person, there's an economy of scale to cook dinner for 10 people because you have, yeah, it's a little bit more mess, but, you know, cooking for one person is kind of hard. So in any event, we got it unloaded. I'm not sure that I would want to go any longer, but it went very well. And I'd have to say, I don't know that I would buy this train just for this purpose necessarily, but it's excellent at this. I mean, it's just it's got such good power that it just backed up and forward. I mean, it, it certainly sped up that portion of it. So I am happy with that. Well, there we go. And we got it right because we have zero pipes and zero beams and we got 54 crude oil. So that's very good. So we got half of the crude oil that we need. So really we need to fill up one more of these trains. So let's take this guy back. I'm, I already flipped the flipper switch, which I had to kind of wait. <laughs> we're stuck out over we're ha even when we're unloading we're halfway back to the thing which is kind of funny but this thing is yeah i would never want to take it on many long trips but i mean let's if you want something to be able to go up like the steepest of slopes this would be the thing you know if you were doing some kind of scenario where where that was your goal would i buy this just for what i've used it for probably not i mean i think even though it was really, really good at doing all this backing up and whatnot, it's just too slow. It's just, yeah. You know, I mean, it's, it didn't improve it enough to, like, just buy another Cook Mogul. Now, again, I haven't used the other trains yet, so, like, but at this point, yeah, if you're really, and I think the Cook Mogul is cheaper, too, so. I don't know. I'd like to see how it makes it. This is as far as I went. It was like that marker, like I said. So hopefully you guys can hear me. I don't know. Get closer to the microphone. I'm going to be quiet till we get back there. 
so you guys can skip ahead if that's your if you want to watch this you can <laughs> I guess I'll give it for those who want the full the full uh, sadistic experience here I don't know if that's, the, that's not the, that's a harsh word for it but certainly uh, <laughs> painfully slow let's just put it that masochistic experience maybe better word yeah, sadistic is more like evil right masochistic and just hurting yourself <laughs> if you're right well, if you want to hurt yourself fortunately it's only right there right we should be good to go on our switches i think we can pull right through actually no that's not true i think i want to flip and go in the other way it's all right stopping in this thing's not a big deal We're about to run out of fire. Make, making the trip even worse, right? I wasn't paying enough attention. This guy can even go with lower power, right? Kind of curious to see how this thing does with just this low pressure because it's so well geared that would be the whole idea right is that even though you have a higher pressure you can go up a bigger hill you could have a very low pressure because this thing is spinning so many times per one push like you really don't need much pressure to actually go forward or keep moving anyway so it's like a lot of trains will stop when they get to like 60 Certainly they won't go up a hill at 60, that's for sure. Now we're on the flat and we are already moving, but we haven't really... I mean, I know we slowed down. We're not going quite as fast, but... I mean, this thing is still, even with only 40 PSI, look, that thing's whirling its butt off over there. Maybe it's easier to see in this side. Not really. We're in, the, in the shadow. All right, so what I think I want to do is when I get around... Well, that's, that's the one that takes us into the into the firewood but the next one over is the i think i want to stop and flip that there we go we got our pressures building back up take it back up to 30 i guess get every ounce of every tenth of a mile per hour out of this thing you know? but but would i keep using it down here absolutely i think i'm gonna just for the sake of doing something different not with the cook mogul i, I think this is pretty cool we can and i'll show you one of the reasons I showed you this painfully thing. Well, I'd like you guys to experience what it takes, right? I don't cut things out just solely not hiding anything. All right, so let's... Uh, it's a little bit like... It's probably a little bit more like realistic. Oh, that, you know what? I don't need to stop here, but that's all right. Now that I'm three-quarters stopped, this is the one I want to flip. So I want to go in the other way and come back out here right so i want to go in this way so that i can leave this train just like it was sitting before right there and then this guy will send me into the right into the right place and then what i'm going to do is pull all the way forward and then i'm going to back back in and i can reload up this part of this train 
right? And in the meantime, my partner, which I don't have, could be taking that train to go get more beams, taking the other locomotive. Now, that's one thing I would say, like, does one thing that I thought about unloading over there, would you ask, like, well, what's the difference with single player? And would two players play together on a train trip? Well, this one you would definitely want to, right? Because if you could save running back and forth, like, you know, you just keep pulling up and the other person keeps unloading, that would be... That would be a nice thing. Right? I think we're just going to go full speed, which seems to be at about 30. <laughs> you know, might as well, right? Only problem is it makes an awful lot of noise. And, and I can't... Yeah, I, I, It's not as much noise as a regular train, but it's a lot of noise. to see too i guess we're gonna have some other trains I, I just can't imagine ever taking this out on the road so to speak i mean i know i brought it down here and it was it may not be as bad as it seems but it just feels really slow i guess we could fill up on the way by here but i think if we do this Yeah, we definitely could fill up here, huh? But I don't know if there's a huge advantage to that. Now, the other thing is, well, we have enough steel pipes, and we have enough tools for another trip. The problem we're going to have is... We're going to use up... We used up extra steel pipes. Does that make sense? Because we just have, we have 54 oil. We don't need 54 oil. We need 46 now. If we use up those other four steel pipes, then we're going to have to go get more iron and for the whole works again. Because I don't have, or do I have enough? Let me see. No, no, you know what? We still have 54 iron and 58, 48 rails at the smelter. So that 54 iron could come down here. Those 48 rails could go up to the coal mine. And there's four coal in the coal mine. Yeah, so we actually could probably make it work without having to go get more iron. <laughs> but it does mean we'd have to take another load of beams and rails up to the coal mine. Get at least a little bit of coal going. So the question is, what if we brought less of those steel pipes over there? We bring back nine less. Would that make sense? No, because that would be like 45, and that would still not get us there, right? So in other words, the we could bring less, but then we'd have an imbalance over at the oil field, right? Somehow. Like, in other words... If we just brought just the right number of, or just the amount of pipes we had and didn't bring a full nine, then we'd have a, some sort of an imbalance. And I don't think there's any way to get to 46. Just so you know, if you add the two numbers together, four and six, that's 10. It's not divisible by three. So numbers that are divisible by three would be like 45, which is four and five is nine. Divide that by three, even, right? So you know, neat little math trick. So, in other words, I think we're going to go get, at some point here, I'll probably do it because we've already shown that in earlier episodes, but I probably will make another couple trips up to the to the coal mine to get a little bit more coal and bring it down here. And then bring a little bit more iron down here as well. So that way we just have that much extra. Because I think the other thing is, all of my math is, we still need... 50 more than we have at that point, too. So, now we should be in good shape to stop anywhere along here. There's no reason that we have to get that close. Oh, oh, oh which is great because I gotta flip the flipper. Alright, so we're gonna stop right here. 
That should be well out of the way for my next plan. And I'm glad I thought about this. All right, so now this guy. We can break this off. Right here is as good a place as any other, right? As long as it's on this side of it. It's not going to fit in the bypass anyway. All right, so let's get this the brakes on these two just for the sake of it. Um, yeah. All right, so we should be free to take this guy and then back him back over onto the other side where he will fit into the bypass. So when the other guy comes back with the load, he can spin right around. fire again. How's our water? Yeah, water's okay. We should have probably got some. But I think we'll make it for another trip. Well, we had 2,000. I don't know if I dilly-dallied or was inefficient, potentially. I think we did some extra yard work that we might not have to do the next time. Yeah, so is this guy fast? Absolutely not. Do you want to buy him? Eh, he's fun. You know, it's, I, I could see the progression. I hope one day they make it more necessary that you would need to go through this, you know, where you would have to buy one of these. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's doing anything but making more noise. Certainly by the time you put it up to 70, that's all it's doing is making more noise. But yeah, he's got good brakes, excellent torque. I mean, if you have a 10% to grade hill, this one's going to give you a chance of getting up it. Can't vouch for that because I've never done it, but... Now, I probably could just have... Well, no, because I still have to flip this. I was going to say, can I get away with not flipping so many switches? But, like, if I pulled all the way forward, could that guy come out back in? Then I back this one in, but I don't think it... I'd still have to flip the switches to go into the logging or into the firewood place. See what I mean? And you do give it 10 and it, like, if you imagine you're picking up, like you just give it 10 or eight and it just, you know, it gets going nice and slow. It doesn't jar the cars. It's, you know, if you want to give it, if we wanted to go faster, just give it 30 and it, and it, it almost accelerates too fast, you know, like it now again, it doesn't accelerate very far or very long, but it, it gets you right up to speed for unloading it. It's very nice, you know, loading. I don't know, I don't think it makes any difference which way I load this. Meaning, do the pipes first, so I might as well just do the pipes first, right? Let's see if we can stop where it makes sense. We have the markers, but... Now, do I have the markers? Why don't I have any markers? There's some. Oh, because we were shorter. <laughs> I'm so used to my trains. I think that's right. right. I would love some color-coded markers. That would just be wonderful. All right, well, let me load this up, and then we'll take the next step. Oh, yeah, it's only one car. All right, I'll back that up a little bit. Be right back once this is loaded. There we go. The last tool is going on. Or a set of tools. I guess there's more than one tool in that box. They use a lot of tools. 
you would wonder what kind of tools they use so much of. Couplings, you would think maybe they would need more than tools, but in any event, here we are. Let me pull this thing forward so we're not, so we're kind of more in the middle of this thing. I have got everything dropped off. Now, here is our problem. We still need 100 pipes. And we only have 46, because we're going to need those pipes for the refinery. There we go. See, so we only have 42, so we really need at least eight more coal down here and eight more iron. Well, how much do we have over there? We have four iron now, so we get the idea, though, right? Might as well pull this guy off of that. Well, you know what? Really, right, right here would be a really good spot to stop, I think. Because there's a hill coming down. All right, when we come up here, it might be easier to see from the other... Oh, oh you can't go over those. That's good. <laughs> Collisions are tough in games because they take more physics. But see how this is downhill? So we go uphill so we can do this. So if I leave it here, then theoretically, we should our coupling should be fine. But what I want to do is come over here and flip this switch so that when the other train comes back in, he can just go right to the bypass and then I don't end up don't end up uh, flipping myself. Derailing, I think they call it. All right, so that's all set. And I like it. I mean, it's, you know, I really wouldn't necessarily recommend buying this train just for this purpose. <laughs> but, you know, getting a chance to check it out and see what it's about and why people are complaining. But, yeah, there definitely needs to be another gear. I mean, I'm not sure exactly why they chose that train to be in the game if you say well it's realistic yeah great realism's nice but this is going to be for the bypass right right here takes us to the bypass thing and then this will have to flip so that when we come back in oh no i'm sorry we want to keep this one this way oh no wait no oh, wait i'm sorry i got it wrong now, this one takes us into there, and we don't want that. Yeah, we want to come back into here. This one, it's a little different because of the way it's set up, but, yeah, we don't want to be able to go into there. Then this one needs to be flipped back this way. Same with this one so that this guy can get out. I should have put some wood in there. That would have been really smart on my part. But let's do it right now. And then we'll go flip these other switches. I think it's just this one switch, but we'll... We'll get it straight. Yeah, I think that's it. Let's see how much. Yep. Oop, how much do we have? Yeah, no, no heat, but we're building it up slowly there. We should have enough to get backed in by the time we do. So this switch needs to be flipped this way, which it is. And then this switch needs to get changed. Those other ones I never messed with, so down there should be fine for pulling straight out because now we have to take this back and go get a bunch more of something. <laughs> All right, let's see. What do we have at the sawmill? Yeah, we only have 53 beams. So it looks like we have to take... Now, do we need, now we need lumber at the refinery, but the problem is we only hold 24. So... Yeah, really, I want to take another set of lumber. Let's go forward. I need to take at least some more lumber to the freight depot because I need to get one more beam. <laughs> I have 53 beams. I need 54 because this is 18. Uh, I'm sorry, three per car, 18 times three is going to be 54 which is a bit of a bummer but again I think we have a lot more yard work up there to do now the good news is is we take these 54 I think we'll be in good shape 
So this one gets flipped back the other way. That one's flipped right. We should be able to back right in there. Just so you know, for those of you, this these last two parts could have almost been. Oops, let's do this. Could have almost been one part. Yeah, look, it's just it's fighting itself. There's some kind of mechanics there that just it really needs to overcome a lot of force to get this caboose moving sometimes, or just to get itself moving. So this, what I was about to say is this is all, these two scenes could have been, this is the finishing, like I like to show you guys each of the loops. And actually bringing these beams back up there is part of that loop, right? So you'll have a good picture of what I'm about to do again because, well, I've already filled this up. Then what I'll do is after I fill up these, I'm not going to show coming back down here again with more lumber. But let's get this part out of the way because... Our problem with the steel pipes isn't here. It's the problem with the steel pipes ha is happening when we go to do the refinery stuff, right? So we'll get this done to where we have all the crude oil we need. We'll end up with, I think it's 108 crude oil. So that'll be eight extra ones. Not sure how that works out in the math with the cars, the oil tankers, but we'll uh, worry about that later. Oops, slowed down too much. Give it a little bit more than that. Oh, I don't know if I... Uh, I probably don't have a link. Oh, I do have one in here. Okay. Yeah, hopefully these are all... still linked. So we undo these two. Well, they'll still be linked because I haven't shut the server down. That's right. I just dropped. I'm thinking I'm picking them up. A lot of times when I do these things, it's one of the benefits to doing YouTube videos is that people talk about not saving. Well, you tend to save because I tend to stop and then I have to process the that one hour's worth of work, right? Come on, go the right way. I'm not going to know what to do with the train that's this fast. But yeah, see, I have to put that up to 50 to really get it going. There's a whole different dynamic that's less torque than the other one. Torque per RPM. Like, overall, it might have the same torque, but the gearing matters, right? That's why a 100-horsepower tractor is, like, a, a farm tractor could be a very powerful tractor because it's just geared so low, you know? It's not like your car, which can go 100 miles an hour. The tractor would be lucky to get up to... 30 in its highest gear, you know. All right, now what I want to do, well, do I want to have to stop on my way back in? I don't know if it matters too much. might be easier to stop on my way in. I'll have to remember to get this. I'll have to remember to flip that because I don't want to go the, that way, right? Well, it doesn't, yeah, it does matter because I want to be able to leave this over on that side. Okay, well, we'll see. It, it work it out. You'd always have to do... It's like when I cut my grass in my yard. I don't always do it the same way. I think I know the best way, but it seems like I'm always experimenting on a new way to cut it. And I think sometimes just for the sake of boredom. <laughs> just try something new because you've done the perfect way too many times. I, I, my yard's a little bit complicated in that it's odd shaped with trees and kind of like certain areas to cut around things. And, Okay, well, our switches are good. Let's, uh, let's see if we can't ramp this bad boy up a little bit. It's nice with all the trees cutting away, but
like this guy's bouncing around a little bit more than normal, but I think they're definitely tweaking and making changes to things as we go, so it's hard to get used to what's normal. And we should be all switched fine to go right in there, I think. You know, just headed down. Feels like a little while ago for me, but yeah, that doesn't that definitely is not the best looking <laughs> pool off right there. Hill go yeah, see that's I don't think it was like I think these things get worse when the game re redoes its thing. I may redo that right there. That's and then I think I want to redo that turn. So there's two things for our list. I don't know if they're gonna cause us problems or not, but let's see, this is where we had the problem last time was pulling it, so hopefully we I can't say we really actually tested it. Let's try to do it at 27 and see. That switch is right. That next switch is wrong. Not sure why that one's wrong. Where did we come from? Or did I do some turning around or something like that? So I'll go check everything. Yeah, so I think I'm not going to be coming from down south to go north next. I think I'm going to be, we're going to be going up, back up to do other stuff. But that could be a little ways off too, right? But I'll flip that this way because I think the next trip out of here is going to be, I probably didn't have to do that. It's the kind of thing I do before I try to re try to get as ahead of myself as I can. Yeah, this is all I forget why we'd be switched like this. I must have done a backing up kind of thing that I forget about, but I thought we just came. Oh, you know what? It was but because I brought that other train down. I turned around. That's right. <clears throat> now I remember. Let's take a look at our money. 4,200. We had like, I forget exactly, like 1,200. So we got like almost $4,000. Right, does it matter? No, I ran all the way over here and it really doesn't matter. As a matter of fact, I want to try it this way. See if there's any issues. One of the issues is going to be like, remembering the flipper. <laughs> it's always an issue. Yeah, so actually, it's going very well. I'm, I'm very happy with these track changes up here. I think I'm happy with our new purchase, even though I would not recommend that train for any... Just If you need something with so much torque and low gearing, then maybe that's your train, but let's see. Let me get the name of it. I forget what the name is right now. Climax. Yeah, that the Climax is... I wish they would tell you the top speed. That is kind of important for the performance, like three. Yeah, but that it's, it's nice to know the torque, of course, but it's, you know. I'm going to give it a little bit more because I have some work to do to unload all these things. All right, keep this thing hot while I'm unloading. We're loading. Which, like I said, I'll run that down by myself. But let's just see what happens when we pull in here. I kind of would have liked to have done it at speed, but we can give it to it, right? Yeah, I don't know if I have brakes on or if this thing's just being sluggish, but it certainly seems like something might have changed in the way they did this. Or the the mod, either that or overall, like the physics might be a little adjusted. Too too fast. Come in here at 22. If we can come in at 22. I'm more than happy because my normal speed is like 15 when I'm doing the yard stuff, right on the regulator with this one. So you don't want to get going too fast and wreck. Flip that the right way, which is good because we would already be derailing if we didn't. And when 
when I say test, I don't really have a doubt that we're going to be able to pull through here. Where my doubts come in is when we do start backing up and going forward and, you know, when you keep jamming on the brakes to, like, load these things, like, sometimes you're a little less gentle and kind. You can see the, you know, when you get this many cars, they start kind of jamming up on you. That'll be good to see. And I put all my markers in. This took quite a while. All these, all these markers. So we want, really, I think I need to get lumber. Yeah, I need to get some lumber out of here. So at least one piece. I guess I could just throw one piece of lumber on the ground. But you know what? I'm just, it's going to be an issue eventually. And this will actually rebalance it, right? It's not even so much that it's, like, I don't want zero lumber, but we're going to take 54 lumber out of here. Oh, we want to be the close one. Yeah, so I want to stop right there. Oh, went too far. Let's see how far that is. Ooh. Yeah, so see my marker. If it's right on there, it's, it's good to go. We should be. Sometimes you're okay. It sort of depends, but let's just see what happens. Does this one get it on the front car or the back car? And sometimes it becomes like a 50-50. Nah, I got it on the right car. So we got away with it that time. Just not by much. <laughs> so, so there we go. So we now have enough lumber. But if you know what I mean, I'm going to take out... You know, if I take out another 54 lumber up to the freight depot, that'll be more money for us. And at the same time, we'll, we'll have rebalanced this out so that we got 100 and 100. Not that that's necessarily what we want, but then we do need lumber to go down to there. And we need lump to down to the refinery. And we're going to need other stuff. We're going to need the beams and the lumber if we have to go up to the iron mine. So so we'll be, we'll be in good shape, I think. And I, we don't actually need beams other than I have to go to the coal mine again to get more coal for down at the ironworks so that will be a thing so we do need to do need to rebalance this at least with another another trip here so well let me keep loading this and i'm just going to take this trip up to the freight depot you guys saw that a couple two or three episodes ago and then um probably going to go ahead and do a lot of work actually because i'm going to take some more beams and and take that finish up our trip down there so when I come back from whatever little break, it's sort of a little bit short on this video, 40 minutes. So maybe we'll come back and start the next trip, which will probably be, yeah, see, because I may do the coal mine. I mean, I've shown you guys all of that stuff before, so there's no real reason to show you more of it, uh, I don't think. And then the next step we need to do is to start getting things over to the refinery. So let me get some more stuff down to the iron mine, the iron works, enough that we can get, you know, 48, I'm sorry, 58 more steel pipes, at least, probably do a lot more than that. And then uh, we'll go from there. Yeah, because those steel pipes need to get over to the refinery before we can start processing. And then lumber is a pain, that's the last car, so... Because we can only hold 24 lumber, but we can get all that crude oil over there. So, so we'll say maybe we'll drag the crude over oil. That'll be our next little trip. That won't take too long, I don't think. All right, guys. I'll see you in a few minutes. Or days, if in real life. <laughs> all right. See ya. I figured out something that we could do to round out the episode. And that is some logs. <laughs> when I first started out this series i thought well i'll show each of the trips and that'll give people an idea of what we're doing to get the 200 barrels and won't show any repeats but this route is so different i thought maybe you guys would enjoy taking a look real quick and i want to see i had this is the first time i've driven it uh, i need some more heat and we'll give it one extra one really don't need that much i don't know if we're going to run out on the way there but this this train is kind of OP, even with its... We'll get it rolling anyway. It's It's got 51. I did throw, like, two pieces in there. And then I just thought, well, let's just take this for a ride. See how much better it is. 
but you can already feel it's better than that turn over back over there <laughs> we'll head down to the logging camp real quick and see what this looks like oh the switch did I ever throw that switch the other way I forget I think I had to to get in here, didn't I? So we'll just check it on the way by. Yeah, I kind of don't like that they cut these trees, but I guess I read a little bit more about the why, and I guess they sort of had to. I don't think they had to do quite as big a radius, but they wanted to, quote, save people from having trees that respawned in. But then apparently there is some that still did, so... I don't, understand. I don't understand the whole problem to understand why they had to take out all the trees, but not the end of the world either. Yeah, see, like these guys, well, it's, that could just be ones that I left. Did they respawn in? I don't know. Well, that's a nice smooth trip. Look, we're not even up to temperature yet. <laughs> we've we've not even run out of the boiler pressure that we've had. This this engine is is just a bit OP. The problem is we're running out just as we get up to this hill. I'm not, I know I'm only putting it on 20 there, but I mean this is just it's just smooth as silk. We did a nice job so far. It looks like you know we got that's a mess to clean up that I hadn't even thought about. Oh, that's that could even be a problem right here, couldn't it? Yeah, look, they they definitely definitely got rid of a lot of trees. Well, it looks like a logging camp that's been logged, right? It's one thing that would be interesting to add actual like an actual logging thing that would take away trees where you'd have to redo another logging camp or you know there's, when you watch logging shows they're constantly constantly changing where they're cutting trees right so it would be a normal thing to have a logging sawmill in the, in the general area and then have to truck things in kind of yeah they can have trucking involved too you know, I guess my marks are still good. I don't know. We'll have to take a look. I think some of them may have been changed up here, but there should be yeah, these two marks right, right close. Now I'm gonna load this up myself. We we'll just I'll pause it real quick and then come right back. It's unless you wanna. Oops, brakes not whistle. There we go. Too far. This is a little bit of a finicky. Look, you don't want to be too far off when you're doing this, or else it'll easily put it on the other one. So let's just take a look. Yeah, yeah, I got rid of. Well, this turn is different, so yeah, let's take this and stretch it out. Right, we'll do an E. A real variable grade anyway, so that should look. Nice enough, and then when we get when I get pulled up here, I can make those two more marks. All right, well let me let me do this, and that's what I've done up here, by the way. The other ones I've pulled the train up forward, but I like the way these double marks work here. Let's see, do I have them down here? Oh no, I don't need them anymore, do I? No, because I'm always coming in the same way. Ah, so let's. Oops. Yeah, I really wish this would default to all. Let's, I'm not sure why they have it default to rails. Just an oversight, I'm, I would imagine. There we go. All right, let me be back in a minute. Yeah, I, that makes it simpler. <laughs> we're, we're always going to be looping this way, which is nice. All right, see you guys in a minute. And that's the last log we need. So let's see about going over and stopping and see how it works out getting water and firewood. We need a little bit, not too much, but we could probably go. Actually, oops, I had to back up because I was a little bit too far in my guess. All right, go forward. Now this used to be downhill, which was a major pain. So now it's nice that it's not 
and it really was because it made it that much harder to hit your your stop. I, I major pain is an exaggeration, but it was was a bit of an annoyance. I haven't dropped off any cordwood to the other side yet, which. Yeah, this is a whole new operation. This is like moving into the 20th century, right? Used to it being on the tender already. Ooh, stop, stop, stop. Too far. Oh, come on. They changed it so you don't move anymore when you start dragging. I don't know if you guys noticed that. That was what I made a video about how to do this, and that was one of my big hints was to I'm not sure I I guess I like it. I, I guess it's fine. Best way to do this just to jump in and see if it's yeah, you know, it's doing its thing. It'll take but a minute. Let's throw one thing of firewood in here. So we really don't need to be doing this on camera too much, but I'm not sure if it's been a, quite a while since I threw firewood on. Let's, in theory, not waste all our water. I really have been mystified since day one where people complain about water not being infinite. I imagine if you have a map that's that's that busy, then water not being infinite could be a problem for you. Yeah, this isn't too bad. I wouldn't want to do this with the bets with with the other cook mogul, or I'd probably actually just back up and not have to run back and forth. Especially because if by the time you go to that other pile, another food for thought about what we were doing earlier. I, I really did run a long distance. Is that full or is that? I don't know. I don't think that's full. Full is it? Let's check. Can I just not see it going in? You yeah, know, that's full. Wasting firewood. All right, there we go. Full of water. The spout's back up. Let's head back down. But, for example, this trip, it took us, what, like three minutes, two minutes? If we took a trip with 26 cars or 20 cars like we have, let's say it's 18 plus, yeah, 18 plus 8 is 26. Put this brake on. See if we can glide down the hill without going too fast. Before this hill would derail me. Well, it wasn't a hill. It was a... Well, yeah. The, the hill would derail me. Now we have the nice fancy bridge. But we still have the turn. This is very similar in some ways to the way it was. And it is and it isn't. Yeah, I think I want to put on some brakes. Be too much coming down into this turn. Probably going to be anyway. Yeah, that's a pretty steep slope into that, which is why we had a bridge instead of a massive pile of stuff. Yeah, I think that might be a little bit overkill in how we did all this, and I forgot to look at that switch. But the point was going to be, sorry, I distracted myself as usual. If we had 26 cars, running back and forth to dump these things off would take... Now, this is a lot faster to dump off logs. But it would take a long time. And I don't just mean, yeah, it would take a lot longer to do 26 cars. I mean, it's you have to run a long way away and back. Would you actually waste more time than just taking a shorter train and a couple more trips? I'm sure there's a, a perfect number that the train length would negate the benefit to, you know, have because the train's going to be like way up here. <laughs> Like, you know, the train would stop right up there. You'd have to run all the way back and forth to unload those last cars. Does that make sense? Let's slow down a little bit for this. I won't even put on any brakes. Just see what happens. But, yeah, this is just... just night and, I got screen tearing all over the place because of... <laughs> yeah, we, we're going to be wood dropping off pros.
Well, we actually read this trip, this part of the trip before, but I guess this didn't even take, well, it took me an extra five minutes to load up. So the whole round trip is going to be like a 15 minute round trip. So, which is good because it was taking quite a while, but we certainly saved ourselves some time. We barely have any room for anything, maybe one of these, which is good because I have to, I think the next trip I'm going to take after I, I'm going to go to back down south, like I said, I'm going to take this back down there and do the same thing we just did and get that up to 108 barrels, hopefully. Let's slow down a bit. Yeah, but that went smooth as silk. I hope they all go that way. No more rail flipping. <laughs> That's awful nice. I can understand why people don't want to get out and do those rails or the, do the the switches. All right, so I'm just going to park it here. I guess that's as good a spot as any. Don't want to get too much on that hill, or else I'll. Oops, man, let's go the other way. It's good enough. All right, see, so we don't have any room. One, one of them. <clears throat> Excuse me. There we go. Can hold one more. So now we got 99 logs. All right. Well, guys, I little bit, tiny bit of a short episode. <clears throat> Just how it worked out. Like I said, I'm going to go over here, get this lumber down to the ironworks, and then after that, come right back in here. Just wanted to show you guys too. I got 30, only 37 lumber because my math is always wrong. Because <laughs> I keep assuming that there's three lumber on each cart, so we're taking a hundred. 108 lumber up there, which means we only have 100 beams. So it's no problem. We can take this cart, this train right up there with the eight uh, logs that, or the eight cars that were, I'm sorry, the 18 cars that we have. And we can do six and, I'm sorry, oh, that's right. We, all, we do six and nine would be 15. I guess we would do seven and 11. I don't know. Anyway, you get the idea. We're going to get some more, you know, at least 50 more coal and iron down to, or coal down to the, down to the ironworks. And I think we have to get a little bit more iron down there to get some more tools. And really some more steel pipe. So, well, there you go. I'm just going on. So this is where we stand. We got lumber going to be sold off at the freight depot. We've got a plan to bring more beams now we can take a whole load of beams right we'll take those beams down there get our oil done and then i'll come back some point after that when something exciting happens which might be hauling over to the refinery or it could be even something else maybe we'll get a new locomotive depending on our money which is pretty darn close to getting a new locomotive so i hope guess i'll see you guys in the next one thanks for watching have a good day take care of yourselves bye bye